Why is Google gobbling up robotics companies? The search engine giant has just acquired a company that designs robots for the U.S. Department of Defense. And these aren't your ordinary machines. They run at speeds faster than the fastest humans, have incredible balance, and can jump from building to building. To discuss this, we're joined now from Stanford, California by Tim Stevens. He's an Al Jazeera tech contributor and CNET's editor-at-large. Tim, great to have you back. This is the eighth robotics company that Google has acquired just over the past year. Why is it gobbling up all these companies? Yeah, they're on a bit of a buying spree for sure. It definitely seems like Google thinks that robotics is going to be a big thing in the future, and I think that we all do. And Google's making something of a big bet or an early bet, and perhaps an investment, uh, looking into the future of robotics. They think that this is going to be maybe the next big thing after wearables, perhaps. Uh, so they're trying to bring together some of the greatest minds in robotics, bring them together, break down some of the barriers of competition, and hopefully some good things will come out of it. So is it Google expanding their product lines, uh, as we've seen with their driverless car? Cars, or are they looking at these robots and these robotic companies as something that might improve some of their current projects? Uh it's unclear exactly what Google hopes to do with these companies, but if I had to guess, I would expect that Google really doesn't know what exactly the future holds here. It, there isn't really a clear path to profitability, I think, through robotics right now. There aren't really that many companies making robots and making a lot of money off of them, except through these Department of Defense contracts. So ultimately, I think this is Google trying to figure out exactly what the market's going to be, and they want to make sure that they're a big player when the market does come to fruition, maybe in five or ten years down the road. Uh, and, and by buying up some companies that are doing some interesting things in the area, they can make sure that they're helping to define that market and that they're a leader when it does become time to actually start to sell these things. Yeah, but it is a long way from being just a search engine to be focusing on things like robotics and, and those driverless cars. Yeah, it definitely is a big step. Uh, of course, Google gets most of its revenue now from advertising, and it's hard to draw a, a straight line between a robot and and selling you ads. But you can, you know, perhaps imagine a future where if the, a robot's able to cook you dinner, presumably it needs to know what's in your pantry. And when you're ro running low on something, maybe there's an opportunity to sell an ad to suggest that you buy a certain brand of pasta or tomato sauce uh, over another one. It, you know, it's hard to know uh, exactly what the future holds, but uh, but maybe there are some opportunities there too. And you know, it's incredible to see what some of these robots do. Let's go over some of the robots that this latest company that Google bought, Boston Dynamics, it's developed all sorts of things. This thing we were just looking at is called the Sand Flea, and it can leap 30 feet up into the air. And uh, it's actually kind of funny to watch. Uh, and then we've got Cheetah, which is the fastest legged uh, robot in the world. It runs 29 miles per hour. That's faster than Usain Bolt. And then there's uh, Atlas, which is the most human-like. It's a walking robot. It can handle extremely challenging terrain, has a lot of balance. Uh, they're really uh, incredible machines. Uh, at what point can these machines actually do a better job than humans can. The big problem right now is that as you look at those robots and they're all they're all very amazing at doing what they do, but the problem is they're all very focused on a single task. You know, one can jump over a fence, that's great, and another one can run very quickly, but if you try to make the sand flea run very quickly, it, it can't do it. It's designed for one purpose, effectively. So what needs to happen is to bring these together and to create one robot that can do a lot of things well, and at that point, then we'll be able to do some really impressive things. But ultimately, there are a lot of applications in the real world, whether it be to taking care of very dangerous situations. Uh, the Atlas Project, one of the, the main driving forces, was the Fukushima disaster and ultimately having a better robot that can go in and see what's going on inside of a nuclear reactor without putting any human lives at risk. Um, th there's a lot of opportunities like that. And also, if you look at the Japanese market, that's a, a populace that's getting much older in general. And they're looking at robotics as a way to help their aging citizens uh, basically live more dignified lives, to have helpers around the home that can help them cook and help them clean and, and basically you know, help them lead better lives on their own. And do you think that might be what Google is doing here, as, as you were saying, these different robots do different things by somehow buying all these different robotics companies somehow getting that synergy going and creating even more incredible technologies I definitely do uh, ultimately there's been a lot of great advancements in robotics but there are all these discrete small companies that are basically all reinventing the wheel they're looking at the same challenges and coming up oftentimes with the same solutions, but in different ways. Uh, by bringing them all together under the Google banner, the hope is that they can work collaboratively and that they can start to 
cooperate and, and do great things together, bring all these great minds together, take down the barriers of competition, uh, and have them not have to worry about funding, too. You know, if they're working for Google, obviously, they'll have some, some pretty good bank accounts to draw upon there, too. So hopefully they can do some pretty amazing things in the near future. And you mentioned, you know, that they, there's really not a commercial market yet for most of these things. Uh, Boston Dynamics specifically it was basically surviving, getting quite a lot of money from the Department of Defense over the past decade or so. They had won uh, contracts, I think, since 2000 worth over $140 million. Is Google going to stay in that military contracting business? It's unclear, but it certainly doesn't look that way. Google said that they will maintain any current contracts, but it doesn't sound like they're going to renew them or pursue any new ones. Uh, it definitely seems like they want to focus on, on the consumer side. Uh, again, it's not confirmed at this point. Google didn't say outright that they're not going to go in for, forward with any DOD uh, contracts, but it definitely sounds like they're not going to move in that direction. We only have about 15 seconds left. Uh, you mentioned the Japanese uh, model. Do you think we're ever going to see uh, Rosie from the Jetsons, uh, and how soon will we? I certainly hope that we will, but we're probably a few decades away, unfortunately. All right. Tim Stevens, as always, it's great to have you with us. Uh, interesting to see what Google is doing. Uh, thanks uh, again. Have a great night.